Hello, my name is Sabrina Medeiros. I am a professor and researcher here at Lusophon University and within the Luso Globe, the Lusophon Center on Global Challenges, is where I am a vice president there. Uh, we are organizing this event, which is a, a conversation with our basically professor and researcher from Turkey, Professor Ner Nergi. And we are very glad to, to have her with us. We, at this opportunity, we, we, uh, we are have here joining uh, uh, students from the political science and international relations department. Uh, we are going to have the Nielsen, uh, um, Catarina, Raquel, and Luis together with us, but also it's my pleasure also to have here today with me uh, Professor Georgi, Georgi uh, Moni, uh, organizing with me this event, and also Professor Claudio Correa, who is uh, a visiting professor. He's going to stay with us six months, working with scenarios, and he is going to be the moderator for today's receiving our colleague from Turkey, uh, uh, who is going to talk about her agenda and her journey. Uh, and uh, we're going to have this informal conversation, yeah. but uh, for sure this is just a, a small piece of what we're going to do as bridging our yeah. relation. Absolutely. As part of the uh, uh, as the European context, as part of the NATO context, as part of uh, the international theme context. So thank you for joining us for today. We are very happy. And please, uh, Claudio, the floor is yours. Okay, and um, it's a pleasure to be here with you and Professor Paulo Correa from the Brazilian Navy War College. And there I teach scenario planning and foresight studies. And we are very glad to receive here Professor Nargis uh, from Turkey. And my first question to you is that if you could tell us about your trajectory, your career, and how, how do you, did you get where you are today? Because for this kind of environment here, mm -hmm. international relation, it's very important to us and to the students to understand uh, the, your path. How did you get here and the connections and the learning? And it's very um, important to us. And from this uh, different perspective, from uh, uh, a very important camp, yes. please. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm Professor Dr. Nargis Özgüran Köroğlu uh, from Istanbul, Üsküdar University, the, the Department of Political Science and International Relations. Uh, well, first of all, uh, I'm glad to be here with Sabrina and with you, and also in Lusofone University. Uh, well, I like the uh, city very much, first of all, uh, and I saw uh, many similarities with Turkey, the Mediterranean country. And actually, uh, first, this makes me uh, think about EU Turkey relations one, one more again, once more again, uh, you know, about the cultural similarities and the, you know, uh, the other uh, similarities. Well, uh, I'm graduated from communication faculty, actually. Uh, and then I continued with EU Institute of uh, EU politics. Uh, so, I, did my, I conducted my PhD thesis on uh, European neighborhood policy. So uh, I focused on EU's you know, uh, relations with uh, Ukraine and especially with the Eastern European countries. Uh, and then, um, well, uh, in associate professor exam, actually I focused on international relations rather than EU politics because, you know, Nowadays, uh, apart from European Union politics, you know, uh, the trades and all politics became more multidimensional, and uh, uh, we have to uh, focus on many issues. So, uh, especially about the recent developments and international relations theories. So, 
you know, uh, now I'm not just focusing on EU politics, but also I'm focusing on uh, international relations theory, theoretical perspectives, and recent developments in global politics, uh, and then maybe the effects of them on the European Union would be more critical uh, for us, I believe so. And today I'm giving lectures in Sudar uh, University, and uh, uh, lately I have a book, oh yeah, it's called uh, Metamorphosis of Turkish Foreign Policy in the 21st Century, and uh, it is published in Lexic Lexington Books, and it was really difficult to find a publisher uh, which is published on Turkish Foreign Policy, because, you know, it's a very debatable issue lately. Uh, but uh, we focused on the uh, new enterprising and humanitarian foreign policy effort of Turkey uh, in different regions and in different uh, aspects. So we found many authors from uh, different countries and different cities. So we get together them and we try to uh, analyze uh, recent Turkish foreign policy uh, agenda. Uh, in different, uh, as I said, perspectives and locations. And I have a chapter also about the Turkish foreign policy towards Ukraine and the Black Sea, because it's a very uh, recent issue after mm -hmm. Russia Ukraine mm -hmm. conflict, as you know. So, yeah, that's the uh, recent <laughs> project and uh, trajectory of mine. Yeah. Okay, okay. So, you talk about your uh, agenda nowadays, agenda. And which are the global challenges that you are facing in this mm -hmm. uh, study, research you are, you are doing? Well, uh, mostly uh, in my courses, I'm focusing on the technological development uh, in the 21st century, actually, because cyber threats, uh, the uh, role of artificial intelligence in politics in our daily life. That's very important, first of all. But after COVID pandemic, as you know, another threat, virus, and its illness became another problem and environmental issues. So uh, actually, I, I try to tell my students that not only the state relations and military relations, but also there are other factors are impacting on our daily lives and global politics. Uh, because now it's a very complex uh, environment, so uh, we have to think about many units. And there are also psychological impacts as well uh, in our daily life. For example, with social media, for example, all perceptions are constructed. With Twitter, there's a Twitter diplomacy. So the impact of social media is also very important to understand global politics. You have to understand Twitter, Diplomacy, you have to understand the impact of. So, the, what is the simulation that is constructed within the me, uh, social media and how the states are using them, for example? Um, you know, that's the main issues. Um, and, well, uh, in the case of the European Union, uh, the migration problem uh, is an uh, important issue. And also, uh, the other important issue is, yeah, uh, the most the migration problem, I would say. Well, yeah. Okay, you said you, of course, you came from a communication. Yeah, from okay. the So it, mm -hmm. now you are studying communication also in, 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 yeah. the, the, in the large uh, perception? Uh, well, we should focus on yeah, yes, social yes. media and micro. But you, you thought about complexity. Yeah, yes, complexity yes. And, yes. and and then you you also told us about um, how different areas are important to the international relations and also to defense. Mm -hmm. So uh, one part of that I came here to study is this complexity, mm -hmm. this uh, in in because this complexity we must uh, look for different source mm -hmm. and. Uh, try to understand and to provoke and to stimulate different source mm -hmm. to, to think that, that, that challenge. So, very good to have you here. And yeah. Sabrina, 
Yes, uh, Shashi would like to add something uh, just for us to uh, to end uh, our recording and our memory of Professor Nergis here. In terms of what you said, the complexity of the international relations, the complexity of security and defense, especially in this moment, historical moment in Europe, and the connection between country that is between Europe and Asia, such mm -hmm. as Russia, for instance, but with really different connections to the rest of Europe, especially the connection with NATO. So I don't know if you can just give us a brief state of play for being recorded, the relations between Turkey and the EU, or in terms of the relation of the position of Turkey within NATO, if you can just give us a brief overview of yeah. your thoughts on that connection and what is and what should be the role of Turkey in this new job in the population that is being basically drawn while we speak. So it is mm -hmm. interesting to hear from you. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, Turkey is a NATO member and it's very important. I mean, uh, we should stay there actually because, uh, you know, uh, yeah, Turkey has a strong military force, but still uh, NATO is a very important uh, secret umbrella and we shouldn't, you know, uh, break our uh, security ties with Western countries. Uh, if, for example, Turkey uh, get, get out of NATO, then, you know, all security dynamics will change in the region, in Europe and Turkey. So, also, you know, Turkey is a part of uh, NATO, uh, European security, is this European sec ESDI, you know, uh, so uh, NATO, uh, Turkey is also a guarantee of European security. So that's why it's very important for Turkey, I mean, the NATO membership, first of all. Yeah, uh, in the case of uh, Ukraine-Russia conflict, for example, Turkey tries to uh, follow a multidimensional multi policy. Because in the Black Sea region, uh, there is a monstrous trade convention between Russia and Turkey. I mean, you know, there are two big after the illegal, illegal I say, annexation of Crimea, unfortunately, Russia became a neighbor of Turkey in Black Sea. And uh, for the Black Sea security, you know, uh, we have to just protect monstrous trade convention. Uh, and, uh, we shouldn't be, how can I say, uh, enemy, with, uh, enemy with Russia. Uh, so we have to balance the, all the powers in the region. Uh, yeah, we are NATO members, but still we have to have uh, to protect Montreal State Convention and uh, good relations with Russia, Ukraine at the same time to protect the regional security. Definitely would be more pro Russia or pro EU in this moment, would you say? Me? No, no, you know, but the feeling, uh, the public opinion in Turkey. Well, do you have any sense of what is happening there? Well, yeah, there are some pro Russians, but also pro European unions. Uh, we didn't stop believing in European Union, actually. Uh, in the state level and in the public, yeah, in the pub public opinion is now, you know about European Union, yeah, there are some disappointments uh, because of Schengen visa problems and everything, but still, uh, still there is a hope. <laughs> uh, yeah, Europe needs Turkey uh, because of this, uh, you know, Syrian migrants are out of life, illegal migration problem is a big problem mm -hmm. for European Union. So, uh, I think, um, uh, it's uh, one of our ambassadors said that it's like a marriage. So between you and Turkey, it's like a marriage and it's 50 years. <laughs> uh, sometimes it is bad, sometimes it's good, but uh, you know, there is a, a serious relationship between uh, us. Uh, European Union needs us and we need them. Uh, so uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, we can talk about after recording, but uh, we, can, we should ask the question, what's going to be in the European Union? Because when you focus on EU-Turkey relations, there are three dimensions. One is EU's internal dynamics, one is Turkey's internal dynamics, political changes, and one is about international conjuncture. So what's going to happen in EU? 
maybe there would be a, a different integration model in the European Union. It's like a Franco-German axis, and you know, for example, a la carte uh, European model or concentric European model, which put Portugal, Spain in the second circle, uh, can put Ukraine in the fourth, <laughs> third circle, or uh, put Turkey in a, another circle. So. Uh, maybe uh, there could be a flexible integration model in the EU, it could change. So what's going to be in Turkey? You know, nobody accepted such a conflict in Russia, between Russia and Ukraine, or can you believe what's going on in uh, Palestine, I mean, Gaza and uh, Israel? So, you know, <clears throat> international conjecture, we will see what's going on. but. Uh, uh, in my point of view, I mean, uh, personally, I'm pro-European, I mean, uh, because I studied on that issue, and I'm trying to impose students positive ideas about European Union, because, you know, there are many, uh, how can I say, uh, you know, uh, negative opinions, silence, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, about, uh, you know, European Union is a Christian club, so on, so forth, but it is not, there are other problems, not only religion, it's it's, it's a very little part of it, in my point of view. Our population is so high, we are an agricultural country. Nobody knows that EU gives the half of the budget to agriculture. Agriculture is an important thing for budget. So the EU <laughs> politics elites are thinking about that as well. But, you know, uh, we have to give more information about the EU to students, Turkish students and students to understand what's going on. Sure. And why, that's why bridging and interchanging knowledge yes. and experiences yes. is yes. so important. So important. Oh, yeah. that, let's remember that you're here because of Erasmus. That definitely. Erasmus. And European Union should give more opportunity to students and citizens. So if we, uh, you know, interchange, as you say, opinions and experience, so we will uh, know each other and we will see the difference and similarities. Yeah, what what we were talking about, humanitarianism, that's very important. Yeah, the human component. Yeah, human component, socialization between uh, different cultures. That's important. Sure, sure, and especially within academia. Yes, I, I like uh, uh, that's mm -hmm. also something about your book. Uh, yeah. We we talk about many issues here. Mm -hmm. Some of them are in your book. Could we talk about to talk a little bit more about this? Uh, yeah, well, uh, from if you want. Yeah, <laughs> of course. I I'd like to uh, say something about it. Well, uh, it's you know. Russia, China, United States, the great powers uh, in one uh, part and the regions, for example, uh, you know, Black Sea, Caucasia, uh, Middle East, Iran, some different uh, perspectives are in the book. And uh, also new ventures, for example, Venezuela Turkish relations. Yeah, it's inside the book. Yeah, that was very Selin wrote that chapter, oh. our, our colleague, yeah. Uh, and also, what was the others? Yeah. And uh, my chapter is about uh, the maintaining status quo in the Black Sea, uh, as I uh, explained uh, five minutes ago, okay. you know, trying to balance the powers in the Black Sea. Uh, actually, we did a content analysis, it's a uh, methodological uh, uh, qualitative method. So uh, between 2014 and 2022, uh, we just took all high-level visits between Turkey and Ukraine after the illegal annexation of Turkey, and uh, we just uh, found some uh, main things uh, and sub things. So uh, we found some uh, percentage of results. Uh, for example, in the discourses of Turkish political elites about this issue, for example, mostly uh, what is uh, mostly stressed by them. Mm -hmm. For example, a Turkey's role is more important, or uh, for example, regional security is less important in the discourses. So uh, we found some results, 
uh, and uh, we analyzed them. So uh, actually, my latest articles, I try to use content analysis, discourse and content mm -hmm. analysis, because you know uh, I was using theories, uh, construct social constructivism. Uh, I like to use different uh, kind of uh, critical uh, theories, but lately. I'm trying to use mostly quantitative methods, so you know it is more. How can I say? See the uh, results in numbers, and uh, it's more supportive, let's say. Uh, but in my next project, I'm trying to use uh, Baudrillard simulation. Uh, you know, <laughs> simulation theory. You know, we were talking about simulation. That's very important for nowadays uh, policies because you know. And perceptions are constructed, a new, uh, you know, a world is constructed by politics and everything. Also in Europe, you know, right wing is increasing, populist policies are creating, constructing many simulations, and social media also creating something. Yeah, that's, that's seems all those students are connected to our land, Giri mm -hmm. Khan So the gamification in international relation plan. Mm -hmm. Let me tell that I always uh, call Leonid the new so so sorry <laughs> Leonid Katarina Hatel Luis and now Abraham and and Aniel they are all part of, of this research team which is dedicated to. Simulation. So, what so are you doing? doing? Maybe they yeah. want to say something. Good, good. So, would you like to introduce yourself and, and maybe tell us about, tell her about your choice of being here, if you want your choice to be here and study political science and international relations and how you see your choices in the near future? Maybe? Would you like to, to begin a little bit? Would you? Uh, no. Yes, Sure, Luis, would you like to, to translate? Yeah, I can translate for you. Yeah, so, yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah, so talk to me and then answer her. I'm going to translate Okay, no, no, no. Si, puedo decir sobre tu ejemplo de obra, que hace perspectiva. Pero, pero, pero. Pero principalmente su interés es pues, para acá. Ah, sí, sí claro. Exacto. Ahí está el primero. Sí, sí, sí. 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 Sí, his, his father is a diplomat, and His time in Venezuela developed his uh, interest in politics because he had a lot of projects within his school to develop with his colleagues. And so um, his father is an Angolan diplomat, and Angolan diplomat Angola has very good ties with the Maduro government, and he he used to discuss that at home. He was a just Google it. Yeah. <laughs> the Turkish series. Thank you, Daniel. Um, and Katarina, would you do? Yes. Uh, so my name is Katarina. Uh, I choose this. Because I 
I honestly am very interested in make you somehow the difference in the national organizations because I think that uh, we all need to do something about it and uh, I want to be a part of it and I think it's important to see how much people in my class and uh, other places are uh, yes, you know. yeah. uh, their studies in that way so they could do something about it and uh, especially about the, the growth of the far right in the Second year students, second year students. First year, first year. First year, first year. 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 So Abel, would you like to 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 talk to speak a little bit uh, with the help of Luis or if you want to Sim, assim, qual foi, qual foi o motivo que te levou a fazer parte? E o que você está fazendo agora? E dá os óculos. Então, vou começar a falar é, do curso. O é, meu interesse pelo curso de ciência pela inteligência internacionais é, tem muito a ver com a negação é, da minha família. É, já tenho um ensino de dois, dois, dois anos. Isso porque a minha família é, foi acusada de tráfico humano e naquela altura começou a separar-se. Então, é, eu fui por, por ir para esse curso para, para poder entrar numa carreira diplomática e poder, de algum modo, é, ter alguma influência em casos semelhantes como esse, em que as pessoas chegam num um sítio e que não são só. E não há essa salvaguarda é, nas suas famílias no outro país. Então, é, a minha escolha é o que eu mais por isso. Então, eu nunca soubemos disso. Então, eu tenho que ser um professor para o meu colega, Abraão. Abraão, por interesse em in política e ciência, uh, tem razão, porque uh, durante os seus teenagers, nós vimos muito de. Uh, caveats from the system where his family was growing and he wanted to have mm -hmm. an influence on that and that's why he chose political science. Yeah, his uh, from uh, his Portuguese and Angola, right? Wow. So, yeah. 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 Where are you at? Is it coming from the Gulf? And he was in Angola at the time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, doing a special one. Uh, he is an Angolan citizen also, and he's asking him if it, it was because he didn't know this. So we are um, we are very sensitive to what you're saying. Yeah. So of course, and uh, his family was accused of human trafficking. So he suffered a lot of this, and he Sorry. dealing. He's trying to do his his. Going to the to this course also to learn how he could he could uh, help people and this guitar and and, and uh, um, given given uh, the guarantee that a sufficient can support people. Uh, yeah. So very very glad to listen to you on that. Thank you. Uh, so Yasmin, I would like to share. Uh, 
course, uh, my interest in the new scores specifically is uh, more about the African representation. Mm -hmm. I'm from Angola, and in Africa, there's a lot of European and Asian influence, and that affects how we live as a continent. Uh, mm -hmm. We, yeah. we had like famous presidents that tried to change it, like uh, Nelson Mandela and mm -hmm. Adam. They tried to change that, but they we were oppressed. My objective in this course is to grow African influence and and change that factor that we don't need as much as European and Asian country to grow. We have a lot of things in our continent, but we are really oppressed and we can we can we can change that by a little, with a little bit of of effort. That is my final goal. Maybe you should focus on the role of African Union. Yes. Do you think is it effective in developing politics? Not as not much really as not as much as we yeah. want. We we don't have much to say in the world, but we could change it. But it's really difficult because the world doesn't like re resolve around Africa. It's more like Europe. Uh, U.S. and Asia. We want to grow so we can change that, so Africa could be like a really major influence in the world. Because most of the things are like natural resources the world has is that from Africa. Africa. We have literally everything that is needed to like have a little bit of influence, but we don't put too much effort. And even the population. Yes. And the population in the future. Yes, because you know also our presidents there are really influenced by European countries. When the president wants to make a decision that it feels good for the country, but then like for some connection they have with the others. Yeah, yes, and the majority of the time they don't do it. Mm -hmm. They they do it, yes. Yeah. They prefer to like uh, let the population live suffer so they could have like good relationship with other countries. I think this is a really bad mindset. Yeah. They really should focus on the country and then have relations with the others. Yeah. One big example in our world is China. We have really, really, really good like relationship with China. But uh, when we were in that with them, the government the first decision the government like made was to give like part of uh Angola like um the points? No, no uh, the like points. natural resources okay. points like diamonds and and agriculture. So oh, it's more. Yes. Yeah. yes. And that would put us in really bad streets. So yeah. but this is globalization or let's say capitalism, you know, raw material. <laughs> but education and you know science, uh technological development needed in your country. So you need a cultural revolution by political elites. Yeah, it's true. For no, example, we had uh, after 1923, we have Mustafa Kemal Atatürk, our leader, and he did a cultural revolution after Ottoman Empire. Um, but still, Turkey is a uh, pre periphery country. Still, uh, it's not a core country, of course. Uh, but education, really. <laughs> uh, after that, you know, science, science means you will have so you can use your own raw material, not to sell the other companies. I think it's really important because the mental change, the, like the, the young people in Africa right like now, they are realizing that without knowledge, we don't have anything. Yes. So they like are pursuing more like learning things and going out of the country to learn more things because in Angola, like the resources for learning, even in public schools is really difficult. Most of the people there don't even finish like the middle school. That yeah. is like something for you to uh, learn more about the world. Mm -hmm. Most of the of the people only learn about like ninth grade and then start working. But when they live like in poor conditions and the like the country asks them what do you want, they don't know what they want because they don't know how to say what they want. Mm -hmm. That's a really bad thing and I think knowledge will help any, anyone to express themselves. It's a really good way to say what you want and the right way. Yeah. One of the things that, that is good to mention, uh, that, that are important to mention, is that Portugal was the first and the last 
uh, colonial power right. in Africa. Mm -hmm. But uh, despite that, you know, the influence uh, from cities, decades and seagulls and whatever, uh, Portugal has good relations with yes. his former uh, colonies. So those tensions that we see uh, in between former colonies and France or Belgium, uh, we don't see the same in the Portuguese case, although there are uh, many effects from the colonization process mm -hmm. that are still in place, and racism and, 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 and social division, social stratification, uh, or start to pass, uh, dependent from these are still to come and are still to be discussed. But one of the things that I I really qualify these epidemic scene as a particularly important scene is that I really feel that Portugal uh, can be one of the best bridges mm -hmm. to global south countries. Yep. when it comes to the European integration process and also the European robustness uh, regarding its own um, action as, uh, and, and presence in international scene. So, <coughs> consider it's close to the um, continent, right? Uh, right, but it's not, it's not only, um, not only, not only the, the, the close countries mm -hmm. such as Cabo Verde, which is an island Oh, yeah. can be considered uh, close, but Angola is in the, the south part of Africa, and then Mozambique in the Indies, and then Brazil in the Atlantic, South Atlantic. So, some way there is a kind of triangle uh, in between Africa, and not only Atlantic Africa, but also East Africa, and uh, America, and the Europe, which has been an important a uh, source of, um, of collaboration and cooperation with, within many regimes, not only uh, European Union and bilateral relations with countries, but also uh, Atlantic regimes, uh, technical cooperation regimes, defense regimes, whatever. So uh, this uh, is some way represented here because we have um, Portuguese speaking students that they came from different, um, even though they only ever speak more Spanish than Portuguese, but it's interesting yeah. because we all uh, have here a very good representation what it, of what it means to be in the university in Portugal. So this diversity came to be an, an asset, in my opinion, for knowledge development here. And of course, there are many discussions to come uh, regarding the, the the real power of Portugal as being um, a small country, but a middle size in terms of its diplomatic its diplomatic assets, and how those uh, those assets came exactly from the way Portugal is being behaving in the last decades um, throughout the international system. And, and how uh, I would say those communities that are here represented, Brazilian, Latin American, mm -hmm. African, uh, or Portuguese, how they engage into a new perspective of internationalization of Portugal, which is not uh, based not on the colonial process. The advantage of being <laughs> ex-colonialist. Portuguese is an international language, and um, as you say, there is a multicultural environment. Yeah, but uh, compared to France, yeah. It's, yeah, um, that's it. So, so it's interesting because in that way, I would ask you uh, before uh, I would like to listen from them, but then if you can add something about this characteristic, because I, I really feel that Portugal can reach yes. the Atlantic, yeah, yeah, especially in yeah. how. Turkey bridges and how yeah. this is part of our own stability. So yeah. how stability in Europe may come from those bridges? 
you yeah. understand me, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> I just Googled Portugal and Turkey, <laughs> and I tried to find some similarities between these two countries. And I found out that Portugal is the western, uh, the west uh, of the, how can western I say? The, yeah, the western side of uh, EU, and Turkey is the, you know, uh, Europe, not European Union, mm -hmm. Europe, and Turkey is the eastern side of mm -hmm. Europe. So there are two bridges, as you say. Uh, well, uh, Turkey geographically is very important between Asia and Europe, between Middle East, Caucasia, and Europe. So all energy resources as well are coming from that way. So it's also economically very important for Europe and uh, for Turkey as well. And you know, uh, also there is a, a project called From China to uh, Europe. It's an uh, old Silk Way project, the Transcendent project, I think the old basic project is renewing now. So uh, we need to develop these uh, trade relations, economic relations, and political and cultural. Uh, Euro, uh, Turkey shouldn't be, uh, uh, you know, uh, shape. What's the, um, you know, the to stop the migrants from uh, Middle East? But uh, European Union should use the advantage of Turkey as a bridge, as you say. I mean, uh, so the perspective should change. Definitely. If the perspective should change, everything will be changed uh, accordingly. Yeah. Actually. And that, in that sense, Portugal yeah. is being much wider, much, mm -hmm. uh, much more efficient in dealing with those. Yeah. Dilemmas. Uh, because, for example, now Georgia has the uh, candidate uh, to European Union, and Georgia is in the Caucasia. <laughs> so, uh, or uh, Ukraine or Moldova. I mean, when you look at the geography, especially Georgia, I mean, after, Georgia. after Turkey, yeah. Georgia is <laughs> starting. Yeah. So, you cannot skip Turkey, uh, by the way. Yeah. yeah it's, so, it's, a, it's a both ways that you can like bridges. Yeah. Uh, of the stability in some way. Uh, Definitely. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and for Mediterranean security, for Black Sea security, and for energy relations from Caucasia to Eastern Europe, uh, from Middle East to Europe. So there are sure. many, you know, uh, many it's a phase of these bridges. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, of those bridges. Yes. Yeah. Hanna, would you like to introduce yeah. So, uh, I don't smoke politics. And I see a lot of my colleagues have a family relations with politics. But if my father, someone is in politics, uh, my father, my father, my mother are part. So they, <laughs> they, they don't really know a lot about politics, they don't have education. So it's, not, it's kind of strange when their daughter wants to be a politic. <laughs> I like politics because I feel that the politics is a way that the people can speak, have someone to speak for them. Mm -hmm. I think that right now we have a really, really big problem, more than the immigration, probably the far right problem. Yeah. Because uh, I, myself as a woman, see that we have uh, the past, we fight for our rights, and now we are seeing uh, the far right take our rights. So um, I see a lot of the a lot of people talk about the war, the immigration problem, the climate problem, and no one is talking about the ones you know, to be here, the African problem, people who don't have basic rights, the the woman's <coughs> problem, the, the one um, this conversation about about uh, the woman cannot even choose. I want to tell you something about it, you know. When you look at the history, European history, after 1929 economic crisis, big economic crisis, you see the right wing is increasing, fascism increasing. So, uh, after our euro crisis, after economic crisis, after unemployment, I mean, uh, unfortunately, right wing uh, increasement and you know, uh, it is all our perils. So. Uh, I should say that it is economic, <laughs> it's not political thing. I mean, uh, just to suppress the economic problems, they just, uh, you know, focus on migration <coughs> problem and the other uh, rights about women and the other things. So, 
uh, I believe that they are all parallel. It's about the conjecture. After the Euro crisis, unfortunately, all over Europe, uh, right wing is increasing. It's just about economic um, financial side. And they use the migration problems as a tool, as a manipulation to just finish the discussion about economics. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah. This is uh, a uh, party program, the manipulation, but not only in uh, Europe. Also in the uh, United States, I mean, they like the same thing, you know, with Trump. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's why academia and uh, literacy and, and democracy is yeah. so important because people should be free to think, people should be exercised uh, 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 and instigated to think and to discuss and to listen to others and to cooperate. So those are the only assets, the only conditions that we may have on behalf of, yes. of those um, conditions, such as democracy and fear and, and so, so uh, rare conditions of visibility and presence. So, um, and that's why she's here to use <laughs> your vote because uh, we just had our European yeah, election. Parliament yeah. uh, elections. Yes, but yes. Yeah. So far right. And still we cannot reach half of the people yeah, that are not voting. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so because Portugal don't care. Portugal don't care. Like, is, uh, a lot of people don't care about politics. It's not something this is a study. I think it's uh, politics should be in the um, high school. We need to start studying <laughs> politics in high school or economic. Yeah. Is the, the things that you really need to learn in school, you don't learn. Yeah, that's true. So the problem is that uh, normally people do not connect their daily life mm -hmm. to what politics yeah. provides and especially um, when it's far away in Brussels. <laughs> so, but, but of course, daily life for the Portuguese and residents uh, is absolutely connected to what the European Union has been doing. Uh, but we, we are definitely not aware uh, because communication is not that good. I mean, in my opinion, transparency and communication scheme and access to information is still poor, especially with this multicultural, multi-language yeah, dimension yeah. of the region. And what do you think uh, Portuguese people feel themselves that Portuguese are a EU citizen? Is there a mentality of being a EU citizen? Not think? really, I believe. So, yeah. um, I'm not talking about uh, my point of view. So, uh, I was born and was raised in the interior of Portugal. So, I think, my point of view, I'm sorry, that the literal, the people within the big cities and the people in the interior of Portugal have very different uh, uh, perspectives. Uh, in the interior, we still have a very nationalism. So it's Portugal, we don't care about the UA, we, they are the best because Portugal uh, is a lot um, economy. Mm -hmm. And the UA is giving a lot of new regulations. Mm -hmm. the, they kind of affect negatively the Portugal commerce and the world. So they see the UA as a bad thing. In the literal, they see it as a good thing. Mm -hmm. uh, I think like in the city here in Lisbon, they love, I think they love Europe. The UA, they, they see it as a good to thing. Be part of. Yeah, they see it as a good thing. In the interior, they don't. So it's I see, I see. Very the countryside, the countryside uh, doesn't have that mentality. <laughs> Would you like, please? Yeah, sure. Oh, sure, sure. We can also stop this. Yeah, yeah maybe the, the, the air. Okay. Okay. I just turn it. Okay. All right. So, um, hi. Uh, hi. Hi, everyone at home as well. Uh, my name is Luis Campos Farias. I just graduated from here. I've been working in disarmament for the last two years, specifically in the regulation of AI in weapon systems, so the development of weapon systems. And I've been doing an advocacy and research on the topic, uh, mostly at the CCWs, like the Convention of Conventional, certain conventional weapons in Europe, 
And I would like to first thank my, my mentor, Professor Sabrina, for organizing this event. And, and also thank you, uh, the Disney professors, for, for hosting this and making it possible. Um, yeah. Are you graduated from engineering faculty? Or? No, I have a background in international relations mostly and also a, a little bit in IT. Okay. So, but, but I consider myself a T shaped professional. So, like, I go deep in international relations and I have like economics and I do like very good well. choice. Yeah. yeah, and it's been part of uh, think tank yeah. and it's been the, uh, leading uh, this advocacy which is dedicated to uh, IA regulation, uh, specifically connected to kill the robots, which are yeah. law, law that's law, what's so. on the most back of the system, law. And so it's been interesting and maybe interesting to talk a little bit about IR because Professor Nart uh, yeah. is, uh, is one of her agenda. Yeah, I was going to ask you, yeah, I was going to ask her that after, after we finished the report, yes. I'd like to do something actually. I haven't done yet. Yeah, right. yeah. And then yeah but uh, yeah, we, we should know uh, we should know about industry 4.0, we should know about what is metaverse, what yeah. is cyber attack, cyber threats, artificial intelligence, role of social media. I mean uh, we should change uh, course, you know, list nice. and uh, yeah. descriptions. And uh, we gave one course. Uh, one of our professor from the other university gave uh, about what was the name of the course. He said, you know, "International relations and technology." That was good. Uh, it's trying yeah. to be yeah, forcing yeah. us to adapt yeah. to the because so students so don't have enough information. <laughs> plus. Uh, we as academics should go into deeper about the impacts of this. Well, uh, I'm planning to write something about uh, simulation theory, so maybe I can focus on artificial intelligence yeah, and social media when the political elites and uh, the states are, you know, creating a simulation in the system. So maybe mm -hmm. I can. I have yeah, that's, that's a good idea. Yeah. So we are very open to bridge this yeah. conversation for the next steps because we are so. we are ready to go. I mean, we we are very glad, glad from Luzo Globe and from Luzon University that you came here Thank you. And this week to be with us. So we're going to uh, have the opportunity to engage with you. But this conversation uh, does not end today because this is going to be a new bridge yeah. of our international cooperation. Mm -hmm. uh, we are inviting Professor Nertis and also her colleague, Professor Steli, to be here to the next uh, Luzo Globe Congresses. And also, we are possibly going to do a joint effort dedicated to artificial intelligence to the next horizon. Uh, and so I would like to thank my colleague and visiting professor uh, Claudio Torreyer for introducing uh, this conversation and making it possible for moderating. I, I would like to thank my students that are here today. We're going to engage with her in a mentoring program day. Uh, so thank you again for I interacting you. With, with our Sorry, students. Very grateful conversation yes. with the students and with you. Sure. Thank you very much. And before we go to this part in which we're going not to record because we want to, the students to be free to be mentored by Professor Nergis, we are going to offer. Yes. And oh. could you tell us more about those suites that yeah, you just brought us? Called Loco. Uh, yes, Turkish delight. I just brought them to, you know, uh, as a memory from Turkey. <laughs> that was very kind of you. Thank yeah. you again. <laughs> yeah, uh, and I'm inviting you to Istanbul, to Istanbul University, especially with Erasmus program. I hope the students can also come to Istanbul. It would be a very fun and enjoyable time for them. <laughs> Sure, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Professor Nergis is a full professor, so she's in the very top of the career. And I'm so glad that we can uh, have undergraduate research, undergraduate students connected to research, 
and for professors such as Katina, his father, with us, dedicated to us. Again, thank you all, and we're going to stop recording.